With the release of Planet Zoo Console Edition, the game is looking to be coming to an unfortunate end, but there is possibility that Planet Zoo on PC could see a future, at least for this year, with a few more animals to round out the game's roster. So, let's have a look at my top 22 animals that I would like to see the game end on. First up is the muskox, a large bovid from the tundras of the Arctic. I say bovid, but they are actually in the sheep and goat family, which is under the, the genus, well, the family of bovidae, which does include bovines like cattle and antelope as well. But these guys are big, hairy, and are one of the Arctic's most iconic species. It would make a fantastic addition to the game. Another Arctic icon would be the walrus, one of the largest pinnipeds in the world. With its iconic tusks, it makes for a distinct silhouette in your zoos. And they may not be too common in zoos and aquaria, but they are still an iconic species that I think the game should welcome. The unique spectacle bear lives in the Andean mountains of South America. Largely feeding on fruit and vegetation, they will also go for smaller animals. They get their name from their distinct pattern on their face, which can make the, the shape of a pair of spectacles. But these guys are one of two species of bears left for the game to introduce, and personally, this is the one I would like to see the most. From the realm of marsupials, we have the tree kangaroo. There are two particular tree kangaroo species that players are wanting, and that is the Goodfellas tree kangaroo that you see here, and the Matches tree kangaroo, which is more common in the US. But good fellows are probably more widespread worldwide, and personally, they're the one I have the most familiarity with. And yeah, the tree kangaroos are just very unique arboreal species that I think the game should introduce, as they are relatively common in zoos. So yeah, tree kangaroos for 2024, please run to. Mark Hall may not be the most exciting looking animals, but they are a spectacular caprine. With their large spiral horns and long beards on males, they make for a distinct silhouette in Himalayan exhibits. This guy would be a welcome addition for the sheep and goat family, as we currently lack a lot. And this guy would certainly make a good addition to many Asian highland exhibits, as they are exhibited in such um, exhibitry worldwide, alongside snow leopards and Tarkin. Along with Markor, the palace's cat is another species found in those areas of zoos. This animal is probably one of the smallest cats we would get in the game, and can piggyback off the sand cat rig. These guys live higher than snow leopards, um, funny enough, at living on the Tibetan Plateau and many parts of the Himalayas into Western Asia as well. These guys would make a fantastic addition, as who doesn't love the grumpiest cat in the world? Hamadryas baboons are probably one of the most requested of the old world monkeys in the game. We don't have a true baboon in the game, the closest thing we have is a mandrel, which is the largest and most colourful monkey on the planet. But Hamadryas baboons are widespread in zoos and can be found in larger numbers, whether that be in one exhibit or just in a whole country, as these guys are extremely social, living in large family groups, which can number up to 200, Thereabouts, maybe even more. But the males certainly have a distinct look that I think Frontier would nail in the game. Moving into tropical regions, we have the Southern Tamandua, a species of tree anteater, much unlike the giant anteater, lives in trees, has a prehensile tail, and is quite colourful actually, with bright gold um, highlights on its fur. It would make a very cool addition. And if the pangolin were to be given arboreal capabilities, the, ta the tamandua would be able to piggyback off that. Ocelots are another small cat um, addition that I'd love to see. They are just beautiful cats. They have a beautiful pattern. And from what Frontier has done with some beautifully patterned animals in the game, I think the ocelot would be well done in the game. Patagonian maras, or Patagonian cavies, are a species of rodent much alike the capybara. Many differences include um, their, their lack of a semi-aquatic lifestyle, as capybaras are much more aquatic than these guys. These guys prefer open grasslands, and in zoos they are, they are often found alongside many of the continent's herbivores, such as rheas, tapirs, even capybara as well. 
these guys would be a very versatile species in zoos, as I think you could put them with almost every South American animal, except the predators, of course. The largest terrestrial bird in the Americas, the greater rhea, is an iconic species of the grasslands of South America and would be the last ratite that we would need in the game to complete the family. We currently have the ostrich, kiwi, cassowary and emu. Rheas are the only remaining species. There is another option, the lesser or Darwin's rhea, but I think the greater rhea is much more highly requested and is more readily found in zoos. One of the Americas largest primates is the howler monkey. These very vocal of, of monkeys, are they come in a variety of colours. But this one, the black and gold howler monkey, would certainly be my top choice. They are high on the meta wish list and are also very common in zoos. An alternative would be the red howler, which is very distinct in its coloration. But I think the black howler, due to its um, readiness in captivity, I think this guy would make a perfect addition in some kind of Latin American pack. Alternatively, you could go the alternate route and have a Geoffroy spider monkey, or any spider monkey for that matter. However, Geoffroy's are very common in captivity and also have a, a range of color variations. Also known as the Central American spider monkey, this guy would be one of the few brachiating animals outside of apes, and probably the only one actually, as these guys use their long prehensile tails as a fifth limb. And it would certainly be interesting to see how Frontier would tackle that, as you can rely on the orangutans and gibbons for just using two arms. But this guy technically uses three. South American coatis are a relative of the raccoon, which we got in the Twilight Pack. But these guys are actually very versatile, much like the Mara, in terms of how you can house them. These guys are often found in large family groups, and you can often see them housed alongside some very surprising animals in zoos. You can find them alongside capybaras, giant anteaters, and many of the other herbivores. But you can even find them, I, there's, a, there's one zoo that I'm thinking of, that where they house South American coatis and spectacle bears together. And I think if Frontier were to recreate that, I think that would be a really cool exhibit idea. I'd love to see that. But these guys should certainly be in the game. They're currently the most requested animal. However, the most requested animals are flying birds. Now, the topic of an Avery pack has been thrown up in the air and brought back down every now and then when there's been a cast of doubt. But if we were to end the game, if we and if we were to get any flying birds, I think macaws are by far the best option. These guys are hyper colorful and very diverse and are also very common in captivity, often being seen as pets, but also are very common in zoos. The five species I'd like to propose for like a, a walkthrough exhibit, much like the butterflies from the Grasslands Animal Pack, would be the Scarlet Macaw, the Red and Green Macaw, the Blue and Yellow Macaw, Military and Hyacinth Macaws. The Hyacinth Macaw, I think, is the largest. Secretary birds are a unique raptor from Africa, and yeah, <laughs> They, if you look at them, they are they just scream unique. They would be a fantastic animal to see added to the game, as, yeah, they're not too common in zoos, but have been successfully bred, and are very cool looking, as I've probably said already. They are also the national animal of, I think it's, oh, what, what country is it? I might just need to double check that. Uh, which country is the secretary bird the national bird of? Let's see. South Africa. I thought it was South Africa. But yeah, these guys are really cool. And yeah, I would just love to see these guys in the game. Another bird option would be pelicans. With the addition of the moot swan and the Eurasia animal pack, waterfowl have just become a lot more possible. And great white pelicans are certainly my next best choice. A very colorful pelican species from Africa and bits of Europe and Western Asia this guy would make a fantastic addition to many different habitats. You could house them alongside the flamingos or many other riverine animals. And you can even mix them with many other types of animal. Like I've seen sa savannah exhibits where you've got pelicans living in the waterhole. But yeah, these guys would be a great addition. Rounding out Australia, I think it's best that we pick the echidna. 
Short beaked echidnas are a particular favourite of mine as I love seeing them every time I get the opportunity. And they're one of the only other monotremes aside from the platypus. And yeah, they they may look like a hedgehog, but they're not those those technically aren't like the same. <laughs> it's a bit of convergent evolution, evolving a similar defense strategy to suit a, a similar purpose. But these guys are really cute and I'd love to see this guy added. They also have backwards facing hind feet, so a hell of a talking point. <laughs> Grey crown cranes are an endangered waterfowl species that, with the red crown crane being added from the wetlands animal pack, cranes are a very possible addition in DLCs now. The, this one in particular is very common in zoos, and I would just love to see how Frontier would handle the head feathers as they handled the African crested porcupine's quills. I would just love to see how they would do it. Moving on to our final three, we have the sea otter, the largest of the mustelids, I believe, at least the heaviest. These guys are also the smallest marine mammal, and I, with their presence in captivity, I think these guys would make a fantastic addition, being probably the most unique mustelid we have in the game. And yeah, I would just love to see these cuties. Our deer for the video is the elk. Whether it be a Rocky Mountain or Roosevelt elk, either way, the Pacific Northwest has elk. And these guys would be the perfect mi midway point between the red deer and the moose, unless you count the reindeer as that. But these guys would be a great addition as you can house them alongside a variety of different animals, like the moose, but also beavers and prairie dogs and bison and pronghorn and all sorts of other animals. And they also just have a very iconic call, much like a bugle. And I think that would be really cool to hear in the game. And our final animal is the American black bear, the second and last of the bear species that would be added to the game, along with the spectacle bear, of course. But these guys, unlike other bears, have one thing that they don't, and that's very diverse color variation. Depending on the population and subspecies of American black bear, they come in a variety of different colors. There are some with white patches on their, on their chest. There are some that are white. In the Pacific Northwest, you have the Komodi bear, you also have cinnamon black bears, which are brown. And yeah, there's just a bunch that I'd love to see recreated in Plant Zoo. And yeah, I would just love to see the black bear. It'd be really cool. But that is it for this video. Let me know what animals you would like to see before the game ends and what animals would make a great final pack. I think if we got all these animals in one pack, I think I'd be a very happy person to end the game with. And yeah. It is sad that the game may end. We just got console edition, and I know a lot of us, myself included, got very hopeful that the game may continue as you've now got an extra selling um, platform. But all good things must come to an end eventually, and as much as we don't want them to, they must. But Planet Zoo has had a very long life, and though there are still so many animals to be added to the game, given the game's success, I could see a sequel happening. And the sequel with flying birds and marine animals would become one of the best zoo games, best in the current Planet Zoo perhaps. But either way, let me know what you think of this video. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate a like. And if you would like to see more, I would love for you to subscribe if you keep coming back. But as for now, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.